You judge. I'll tell you a story and you judge. Would you like me to do that? I mean, this is a personal thing, but that's what the questioner asked. As you know, I'm interested in Russia, but the reason I started going there is that I once was at a conference of mathematical cryptographers, you know, the people that try to ensure that your ATM transactions are secure, which depends on the factorization of large prime numbers and so on. And at the end of the conference, uh, the bus driver took a pal of his to the station with the result that 50 of us missed the train. So you have 50 angry mathematicians standing on the platform. And we got a later train, and I found myself in a compartment in the end at night with a German student, a Belgian foreign relations tourist uh, person, and a couple of Russians. And I started talking to the Russians because I speak a bit of the language and discovered that they were from Lake Baikal. And he said, I'm an ecologist, actually. And this was 1989, and I thought, this is astonishing. Do they allow ecology? I said, do they allow ecology? Because ba ba Baikal is one of the deepest lakes in the world, and there are really big questions about what secret plants were doing polluting it. And to have an ecologist from there was just astonishing to me. Oh, yes, he said, they, they allow discussion of ecology. And suddenly, I mean, it was a bit angular, I said, do they allow conversations about other topics? He said, like what? Well, I said, like God, for instance. And he said, yes, but in that second, I had an insistent feeling I had to give him a Bible. You've got to give him a Bible. I've never had this feeling before or since. So as we talked, you've got to give him a Bible. But where do you get a Russian Bible in a train going through Belgium in the middle of the night? And then I remembered, after possibly 10 minutes or so, I remembered that I'd been in Germany three weeks before and been at the home of a publisher and he had a beautiful Russian Bible lying on his desk. And I picked it up. He said, is that any good to you? Well, I said, I'd love one. It's much better print than mine. I put it in my case. And as I talked in this train, I thought, would it be still there? Surely I left it at home. So I got up and pushed my hand in the top the way you do, and it was still there. Pulled it out, handed it to him. And I said, that's for you. And he went as white as a sheet. He was totally speechless for quite a while. And then he said, how do you know? I said, what do you mean, how do you know? He said, how do you know that eight weeks ago, the only Bible we've ever seen in our lives was stolen? And we then got permission, which we never dreamed of getting, of coming to the West for a conference. And in four hours' time, we're taking off from Moscow. How did you know? I said, do you believe this book? And he said, I'm not sure. But he said, she does. And his wife was sitting, beaming. I'll never forget her. She took it, she hugged it, she kissed it. Is this really for me? And they were gone. And the German student turned to me, I'll never forget it. And she said, does that often happen to you? <laughs> and I said, not every Tuesday, no. <laughs> but I said, it's completely logical. She said, how? Well, I said, these people have been deprived of the word of God for 70 years. God can use me as a postman. Now, I leave you to judge what that was. But I know what I think it was. And, of course, I've had many experiences. Not all the time, of course, because that's not what you would expect. But enough to confirm personally rather than remotely by interaction with others that, of course, God, the God of the New Testament. But I need to make a final point. Every conversion is supernatural. And that's the biggest thing. You see people's lives taken from the edge of suicide, taken from alcohol, drug dependence, cleaned up, divorces prevented, relationships healed. Those are the big things. It's odd that whenever we think of miracles in the supernatural, we always think of healing. Why is that? It's an infinitely bigger thing to be, as the New Testament puts it in its language, born again. 
That by definition is a supernatural act of God, isn't it? Born from above, as the Greek puts it. So yes, I do think miracles still occur, but we need to make the caveats because there's nothing more destructive, and I say this from a considerable amount of experience, as well-meaning people going to others and saying, you know, you're suffering from Alzheimer's. If you had enough faith, you'd be cured. And then, when they're not, they're left with a God that lets them down. How many a family has been destroyed when children are told their dad's going to get better and the Lord has said so, and they're left, as many a child has told me, with a God that tells lies, and I will not believe in a God that tells lies. So you need to be very, very sensitive with this kind of thing. Thank <laughs> you.